football teams of these two neighboring states, Michigan and Ohio, have been engaging in a rivalry that is truly second to none. Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler on the sideline. Larry Pearson gets to the 50. He may break this one. What has to be the upset of the century. The final attempt was wide. Ohio State was awarded the trip to the Rose Bowl. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Heisman. Now we'll fight. Settle down and play football. Got it. The Big House, Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. The 109th meeting between the Buckeyes of Ohio State and the Wolverines of Michigan. This one all started in 1897. The game, Michigan leads the all-time series. Five times they have ruined undefeated Ohio State seasons. They hope for number six here today. Welcome to Ann Arbor, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Todd Blackledge. Ledge, Michigan started the season in fine fashion, but they have lost three of their last four now. This would make their season right. if they can pick off an undefeated Ohio State team. And to do so, they're going to have to slow down the number one total offense team in the Big Ten and the number one rushing game in the Big Ten in Ohio State. You know, if you want to win games in the Big Ten in November when the weather turns, you have to be able to run the football. And nobody has done that better over this last month than Ohio State. They are averaging nearly seven yards per carry. And it starts with their quarterback, Braxton Miller. He can throw a little bit too but the last two weeks he's run for over 300 yards operating this zone read offense of Ohio State he's very difficult to bring down in the open field with one guy but the key to this running game is Carlos Hyde their senior tailback missed the first three games of the year still has gone on to become the only thousand yard back that Urban Meyer has ever coached 230 pounds powerful but also extremely quick and fast but it all starts with an offensive line that has started the same five all season long and it's led by four seniors a much different story for Michigan this year Michigan's had to shuttle their offensive line all season they hope it's stabilized today they hope to pull the upset today and it is senior day as the Wolverines run out 17 seniors will touch the banner for the very last time here in Ann Arbor the Buckeyes are perfect 11 and 0 they know they're going to play Michigan State in the Big Ten championship game, but they keep their hopes alive of a possible national championship appearance, depending on what goes on elsewhere around the country in the next couple of weeks. Michigan won the toss and deferred. Ohio State will receive, and it'll be Matt Weil set to kick off. Jordan Hall and Dontre Wilson are back deep. This one will go out of the back of the end zone. We check in with the third member of our team on the field, Holly Rowe. Well, you said this game is affecting families. How about it's affecting state law? The Ohio governor got involved this week. John Kasich actually put out this official resolution. There's an official seal. He and the lieutenant governor have signed it asking Ohioans to refrain from using the letter M today. It is a resolution that started in a cabinet meeting about 10 days ago when the cabinet got involved with this rivalry and some trash talk back and forth. So I think it will make a very interesting day for our broadcast partner, Todd Blackledge, who is from Ohio. Can you do the game without saying M? Oh, boy, I don't think he can. First down, and it's Carlos Hyde straight ahead for almost seven yards. Todd just talked about him and his cohort in the backfield, Braxton Miller, with his numbers on the year. Ever since the Northwestern game, Braxton Miller has taken his game to a new level. Here he is and throws wide open, but he missed Devin. Pass game over the last five or six games has really opened up for Braxton Miller. He had his target wide open, just a little behind him with the throw. Ohio State 53% on their third down conversion so far through 11 games. They've got third down and three here on their opening possession. Part of the reason they've been so good on third down is that Braxton Miller is such a dangerous runner when things break down. And third and three, you have to account for him. Here he is in the shotgun. And here he comes, and he's got the first down. Right on cue, picks up four, and they'll move the chains. Difficult to stop their straight ahead run game. This offensive line has played beautifully all year. Same starting five, four seniors. 
playing with great confidence up front, and you've got two guys running behind them that are as good as there is in the country. Only one time this year they haven't scored on their opening drive. That's amazing. Here's Hyde taking it to the left side and out near the 40 yard line as we take a look at our impact players today. Brought to you by Chick fil A. And obviously, Carlos Hyde is going to be involved today. Corey Brown has got nine touchdown catches. Frank Clark and Jake Ryan. Greg Madison told us yesterday those two guys have got to play huge for us if we're going to beat Ohio State. Jake Ryan torn ACL back in March in spring football. Incredible recovery in the last two weeks, the healthiest he's been. Hyde breaks into the secondary. And Carlos Hyde, his birth first. Big run of the day down to the 42 yard line a pickup of 19. The inside linebackers for Michigan are not particularly big guys. They're pretty quick. But again Carlos Hyde is 230 pounds and unless you see him on the field you don't understand how big he is. Play action Miller in trouble and down he goes. Then get in. A loss of four. Well, Ben Gideon is one of those linebackers. He's a freshman out of Hudson, Ohio. Used to play AAU basketball with my son Harrison. <laughs> Tremendous athlete, and he is beginning more and more playing time over the last few weeks. Very smart kid, really coming along. You were telling me, and so is Greg Madison. He's such a nice kid, and he's such a good student, but he gets on the field and something yeah. clicks. He's got a little nasty streak to him, <laughs> which you need to play defense. Second down at 15. And Braxton Miller on a quarterback draw. Miller got back near the original Braxton line of scrimmage, Miller getting it again and on the stop. We talked about this Ohio State offensive line. Coming into the game today, 135 career starts. That's a lot of football these guys have played. And you look at the numbers, what they've done. They protect their quarterback, they lead the way for the running game, and they make it tough to stop them on third down. But third and long, is in the hands of Michigan. Third down and nine. The eighth play of the drive here for the Buckeyes on the opening possession of the ball game. In a pistol set. And now they switch over. It's Elliott in the backfield with Miller. Braxton's got plenty of time. And he's going to go long. Double coverage down there in the end zone. Tips and incomplete. One of the plans. And Braxton Miller slow getting up. At the end of the play, hit pretty hard by Frank Clark. Very slow getting up. Ohio State's plan on third and long is to go seven-man protection and just work three-man receiver routes. Good coverage down the field. There's the hit by Clark at the end of the play. Double coverage on Spencer. A big third down stop for the Wolverine defense. So as we showed you before, this is only the second time Ohio State's been stopped on an opening drive all year long. And that's perfect for Michigan. A good start for them, forcing a punt. Johnston to kick. And over end punt. They're just going to let this one go and hope it makes the end zone. And it did not. Great job by the special teams of Ohio State at the one yard line. So that's a tough place to start for Michigan. Well, there's been perfect seasons ruined before 1969. Ohio State undefeated, hadn't trailed in that season, entered the game, and they lost. Same thing, 73, tied Michigan 10-10. They went on to the Rose Bowl. 95, Ohio State lost to Michigan 31-23. 1996, they lost to Michigan, 13-9. Ohio State won the Rose Bowl against Arizona State. And here today, trying to ruin an undefeated season for the Buckeyes, who come in 11-0 and riding a 23-game winning streak. Well, right away, we're going to see, with this field position, how the Michigan offensive line responds. That's been the key issue. Five different combinations they've tried up front through 11 games. Their tackles are seniors, but everybody on the inside that they've tried, all sophomore and freshmen, very difficult place to start right here. About eight yards deep for the tailback, but he gets out to the four. That's Derek Green, the biggest of their backs at 240 pounds. 
Devin Gardner, the junior out of Detroit. There have been high points this season, like the Indiana game. There have been low points, like the Iowa game. He's had great games. He's had bad games. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of both. And uh, he had turnover problems early in the year. He's kind of corrected that, although he did fumble on the last possession last week at Iowa. I think it's critical that he and this offense get off to a good start today. Second down and six from their own five. Opening possession for the Wolverines. Again, Green is in the end zone. They fake it to him, and Gardner goes complete out across the 10 near the 14 to Jeremy Gallon. That's a first down Michigan, a pickup of nine. As we take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players today, Jeremy Gallon's been one all season long. 72nd catch he just made. Devin Funches had a bad game against Iowa, but he's the best Big Ten tight end right now. Shazier creates a lot of havoc defensively and Bradley Roby's already announced he's going to the NFL after his junior season in All-American last year. So some breathing room now for Michigan at the 14 yard line. Gardner the throwback screen to Gallon and Gallon with some blockers in front and Gallon is off to the races. He might take it right here. Gallon down the sideline and he is down at the two yard line. Tremendous hustle play by Roby, but what a start for Devin Gardner and the passing game. I asked Al Borges, what's a good start look like for Gardner? He said a couple consecutive completions. Well, there's two in a row to Gallon. Beautifully executed on the wide receiver screen. Taylor Lewan, their key tackle, paves the way and a great start for Devin Gardner and Jeremy Gallon. First and goal at the two. Green the tailback in the eye. He'll get the carry. Stops at the line of scrimmage. Might have eked out a half yard. Shazier in on the stop. Well, he's a 240 pound back, but you don't tiptoe when you get up around the goal line. He's a freshman out of Richmond, Virginia. He's got to hit that thing in there with his nose to the ground. He got about the length of the football. Second down and goal. There's what Michigan's done in the red zone this year. Toussaint now checks in at tailback. He's the senior out of Youngstown, Ohio. On the option, Gardner keeps and scores. Touchdown, Michigan. What a way to start at home for the Wolverines. They force a punt, and then they go 99 yards for a touchdown. Extra point by Weil is up and good. 9.24 remaining first quarter. We talked about an impact. Gallon made one, didn't he? All the way down to the two-yard line. And then one play later, his quarterback with his 11th scoring run of the year, and the Wolverines up 7-0. Well, Tuesday night, the students at Ohio State jumped into Mirror Lake on campus. Annual Michigan Week tradition. 30 degrees Tuesday night in Columbus. And oh, yes. We had to find someone crazy enough on our crew to do that. And that was one Connor Johnson. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate his efforts. Takes after his father. And the kick out of the back of the end zone. Well, I mentioned Braxton Miller really taking his game to a new level since Northwestern. That's been mental and physical. He keeps this one. He's tough to bring down even when you get the first hit on him. You have to hem him in with more than one guys. Urban Meyer, 23 straight wins, 24 actually for him. If you go back to his last game in Florida before a year in broadcasting and now here in his second season in Columbus. We mentioned Connor Johnson jumping in Mere Lake. Urban's daughter Gigi was also one that jumped in the lake the other night. As I said here in Columbus, I didn't mean it that way. We're in Ann Arbor. <laughs> I might not get out of town alive if I make that mistake again. Second down and six. All three wide receivers to the top of your screen. 
But they keep it on the ground and spinning for another first down is Hyde. Pick up of seven. See, that's the difference. If you don't stop him close to the line of scrimmage, his lower body is so powerful that he's going to spin and drive his legs and run through arm tackles for four or five extra yards. You mentioned earlier the only 1,000-yard back that Urban Myers ever coached, which is amazing in itself. And this guy is going to be a big-time player on Absolutely. Sundays, too. Well, he's big and powerful, but as you'll see in this game, the amazing thing to me about him is how quick his feet are in the hole and his ability to change directions. He gets a breather right now. Elliott, the freshman, takes his spot. Evan Spencer in motion. Play fake. Braxton Miller firing that way and behind Spencer, who had a step over there. And that's the second time Braxton Miller has missed an open yeah. receiver. I think on that one, Braxton knew there was a defender in the area and tried to throw the ball away from the defender, who I think was Jake Ryan, but he threw it too far away because it wasn't even catchable for Spencer. So that's one that got away and brings up second down and 10. Jordan Hall now into the backfield for the first time for the Buckeyes. Dontre Wilson over in the slot. Braxton Miller, that looked like it was not a design run for him, and he gets nothing. Desmond Morgan hanging on to his leg to bring him down. You know, last week when Ohio State pretty much did whatever they wanted offensively against Indiana, they only had seven third down plays. They were five for seven converting on third down. It's pretty easy to play offensive football when you have that. Well, they're already facing what? Their fourth or fifth. Third down situation, fourth third down situation of the ball game so far. And again, it's third and long. The two that they converted were for six yards or less. Miller going to air it out long. He's got a man out there. Got him. Devin Smith, touchdown. Three yards right on the money. Can't put it in a better spot than he just put it on that touchdown pass. Drew Basil in for the point after. And we're tied in Ann Arbor. 5.08 remaining in the first quarter. Braxton 75 yard drive. Excuse me, Ledge. Braxton Miller missed Devin Smith in the first possession. Not this time. Excellent For Devin combination. Smith. That's touchdown number eight. And it's tied at seven. 7-7 seven, seven on Braxton Miller's 20th touchdown pass of the year. Well, credit Braxton Miller for making the read, but if you're Michigan, this shouldn't happen. This is seven-man protection, so there's only three guys going out, and Michigan has four defenders. And what's going to happen is you're going to see two safeties at a certain point just not even be a factor. Right here, Furness and the other safety, Gordon, Furman and Gordon, are both out of the play. And one guy streaking down the field. Braxton Miller saw it and read it. But if you're Michigan, you can't allow that to happen in a game like this. You've got the right defensive personnel out there. You can't let somebody run right behind your defense. Basil, a kickoff. Norfleet and Justice Hayes are back deep for the Wolverines. A high short kick. Be fielded at the 10 by Norfleet. And Northleet's got the edge. He could go. We got a flag down as he takes it down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds, but again, it's all coming back. On the return, holding, receiving team number 32. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the fall. First down. Sean Austin, number 32. He was in great position to block. Had his head in the right spot. He said he took his man down. First penalty of the game is a costly one. Michigan would have had it first and goal again. 
Gardner, play action. Throws and wide open is the tight end. And it's Jake Butt down inside the 25. Pick up a 37. Well, a bust by the Ohio State coverage. They just let the tight end run free. Butts on the left side, number 88. Watch him run right down the middle. And when Devin Gardner was able to extend the play with his legs, he was able to find the tight end in the middle of the defense. Butt was down there just waving his arms. Yeah. <laughs> totally unaccounted for by the Buckeye defense. That's a career-long catch for the freshman tight end, and he's got it at the 22-yard line with a Michigan first down. Gallon on the end around. Gallon getting the edge, puts his head down. It's going to be first and goal Wolverines. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, if Ohio State is going to win their 24th game in a row and finish this regular season undefeated, they're going to have to play an outstanding game. They're going to have to bring their A game because Michigan has got some confidence here in the first quarter, and they are, are playing at a higher level than we've seen the last few weeks. We asked Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, said, what do you got for him? He said, we're going to empty the drawer. Yep. The drawer's uh, already got a dent in it from what they've done here in the first quarter. First and goal at the eight. And it's Smith. Got to the five and then stood up by Joshua Perry as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, keep in mind in this range of the field that Michigan is without their five-year senior place kicker today. Brendan Gibbon is out after tweaking something in practice yesterday. He's injured and not even dressed for the game. So their punter, Matt Weil, is going to have to do all place kicking today. Weil's only kicked one field goal all year. We'll see if they need him here. Weil's been their long field goal kicker, so... Maybe he would have trouble from short range, but he likes the long shots, and he's been their kickoff guy as well. In a pistol set on second down and goal, the option pitch, and this is an easy touchdown to stop for the score. Both Michigan touchdowns have been off the option. Devin Gardner executing it perfectly, taking it right at the inside shoulder of the defender, and then making the read off of him. The Michigan offense hasn't looked this good in about a month. They picked a good time for it, didn't they? While in for the point after. Just inside the right upright. Michigan showed pass. They had three wide receivers stacked to the wide side of the field. And then they came back to the short side with the option. Here's the guy that you put in a bind. Attack his inside shoulder and then make him decide. He picks quarterback. Nobody's there for the pitch. Perfectly executed by Devin Gardner. And Fitzgerald, two shots. 12th touchdown on the ground this year. And that puts the Wolverines back in front by a touchdown. 70-yard drive in seven plays, just under three minutes to regain the lead. Well, and again, the key for Michigan is they've done what they needed to do early in the game to give them confidence to try to take this thing all the way to the fourth quarter. And again, Wild drives it deep into the end zone with 2-11 remaining in the first quarter. So now let's see if Ohio State's got an answer. From the 25, it's Hyde, and he just drags Wolverines for five yards. Well, again, th this is what has made Ohio State so good here the last month, their ability to run the football. The last four games, they've won all four, obviously. They've dominated their opponents on the scoreboard, and they've averaged over 370 yards a game rushing. And here's Hyde into the secondary again. Knocks it out to the 40-yard line before Avery made the stop. Ten more yards for Hyde. Running right behind the center, Corey Lindsley, one of those four senior starters. He and uh, Jack Muir are the two leaders up front, the emotional leaders of that O-line. And again, he almost popped it out of the backside, picked up seven more. So Carlos Hyde has had a tremendous year, off to a great start here in the first quarter again. After that seven-yard gain, he'll get a breather. Second down and three. Dontre Wilson, the freshman in the backfield with Braxton Miller. This has got Miller written all over it right here. Empty backfield. And there he goes on the quarterback draw. And he's into the secondary. Great move. And now the speed 
in the middle of the field looking for a stiff arm touchdown Ohio State what a run the second 53 yard touchdown of the first quarter one by his arm and that one by his feet longest run allowed by Michigan this year Drew Basil in for the point after. Up and good. 55 seconds remaining in the quarter. Well, <laughs> Braxton Carlos, Miller, something else. Yeah, Carlos Hyde's going to run over you. Braxton Miller is going to make you look foolish when he gets you in the open field. He makes two guys miss. Watch the first guy, Heinzman, number 92. He makes him miss, and then right in the middle of the field, you got no chance. If you're this guy right here, and he can go either way on you, you got no chance. It's Courtney Avery. See ya. Touchdown, Ohio State. Puts a stiff arm out at the end and dives into the end zone. And that is his sixth scoring run of the year, and none more impressive than that one. Like I said, they're the two best running backs in the Big Ten. Todd, we're on pace for 1,400 yards of total offense here this <laughs> afternoon on this bright, crisp day in Ann Arbor. <laughs> Could we ask for a better day, though? No, this it's is beautiful. spectacular. There's our total yardage in quarter number one. Basil to kick off again. Norfleet had a long kick return brought back by a holding penalty. He's going to take this one two yards deep and bring it out. And he got across the 20 and out to the 22 yard line. Derek Green the tailback. And they give it off to him and Green's got a big opening and he goes for 11 yards in a first down. Not sure the pass fake did much to fool the Ohio State defense. Just good execution. Solid block by the fullback. Joe Carriage, number 36, leading the way. As you mentioned, good mix of run and pass. And, and this offensive line that has really had problems and inconsistency all year, at least in the first quarter, playing very well for Michigan. They sure are. Gardner again under center on first down. Play action bootleg and a throwback screen to the tight end butt and here's Jake Butt again and Butt weaving his way through the traffic all the way down inside the 40 and what a first quarter the freshman tight ends have it. Well what a nice job by Butt setting up his blocks too. He had two linemen out there the center Glasgow and Michael Schofield number 75 to tackle and watch how this big tight end sets up both blocks. He's patient. He allows them to get to their man and cuts in between the two linemen for extra yardage after the screen. That's the and the, the first, first quarter was a great one. Tied at 14 at the end of one of this presentation of college football presented by Kay Jewelers will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Fourteen fourteen at the end of one as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. The two quarterbacks today. Braxton Miller's only completed two passes, but one was a 53-yard touchdown toss. Devin Gardner, 176. That included one to Jeremy Gallon at 84 that got him down to a first and goal. Now, right now, both offensive coordinators, Al Borges for Michigan, Tom Herman for Ohio State, calling beautiful games. That's Funches, the tight end. Coming into a slot on the right side on first down, and they're going to throw it out to it with a blocker in front, and then a hurdle job by Funches. Wow! wow. <laughs> what a play! Doran Grant, the cornerback, tried to go low for the tackle on a bigger receiver, but he went too low. And Funches, wow! That's incredible <laughs> athletic ability for the sophomore who's already had the best tight end season in Michigan history. <laughs> Top 10 plays, here I come. And a block by Jehu Chesson, the other wide receiver out there, kept him clean too. 
Inside the red zone again. Gardner play action. Goes to the corner of the end zone. Gallon touchdown. Boy, this was nice. Nice read. This is not your granddad's Michigan Ohio State game. The way Devin Gardner is playing right now has got to make Brady Hoke ecstatic because he is seeing everything right now from the quarterback position. Extra point is good. Ohio State came with a corner blitz. Devin Gardner saw it all the way, knew what he had with his favorite receiver, Gallon, and put it in a place where only his guy could make the play. Michigan back in front on Devin Gardner's 19th touchdown pass of the year. When a quarterback is comfortable, his vision expands. Roby's going to come on a blitz. That blitz is going to be picked up by Tucson, and Gardner knows that means a safety. C.J. Barnett is going to be one-on-one -on, -one on his favorite receiver, Jeremy Gallon. You like those odds if you're a quarterback? Give your guy a chance. Beautifully thrown ball, but it started with the vision and the recognition by Devin Gardner. He nope. hit his last six passes. Eight out of nine, Gallon for him. That was his ninth touchdown catch of the year. This one should be returnable for Dontre Wilson from a yard deep. And he's collared as he crossed the 15-yard line. And let's check in with Holly. Well, his season has not gone as planned for Devin Gardner in his first time as a full-time starter. Uh, Holly, we're going to have to interrupt you. We got a big-time battle going on right now. The officials trying to separate everybody. Well, Dontra Willis better go find his helmet. He's one of the freshmen, and you don't want any of this because you don't want to lose key players. The head coaches are out there. The assistant coaches are out there. Everybody trying to break up the melee. And there are flags all over the place. Well, I, there might have been a punch or two thrown in there as well. We're going to have to straighten all this out. Mike Cannon is our referee, and he'll get the back judge and the umpire and everybody in a huddle there. Try to straighten it out and figure out who did what. You want guys to play with passion, but you got to play with fire in your heart, but coolness in your head. And, and even in a rivalry game, when there's so much energy and emotion, you've got to keep your composure. And there you see what went on after the play, after the kick return, and there did look like a punch thrown by Roby. Or Wilson. Yeah, well, Wilson still, Wilson. he's still winging it. Now, there was more than one punch. Jim Kemmerling is our replay official to our immediate right. The guys came in to say hello before the game, and I said to them, hopefully we won't have to uh, worry too much about what went on on the field, and uh, we're going to have to. Well, both these head coaches, when we talked to them, talked about this rivalry, that there is hatred, there is animosity, but there's also respect, mm -hmm. and, the, and the game is normally played with great respect. This is not a respectful situation right here. Here's a call. After the play was over, we have unsportsmanlike conduct, number 52 of Michigan. Michigan's that way. Of Mi Michigan, that way, that's an ejection. Ohio State, unsportsmanlike conduct, number one, that's an ejection. Unsportsmanlike conduct, Ohio State, number 79, with an ejection. The ball will be placed at the end of the run. So that's it for the day for three players. Well, and again, it's a backup linebacker for Michigan. You don't want to lose anybody. Special teams guy. But now you're talking about in Don Trey Wilson, one of your key offensive weapons for Ohio State that lost his composure. 
and a starting offensive lineman, Maurice Hall, who also is ejected. Oh, boy, that's not going to make it any better. I mean, Maurice Hall shouldn't even have been on the field. He came off the sideline because it was a special teams play. There's Maurice Hall. He was on the sideline. He wasn't even out there for the play. Now it's going to be interesting to see how the officials control boy, the next boy. three quarters because it's going to stay heated for a while. If you're just joining us, Michigan leads by a touchdown and a seesaw back and forth battle. And now Ohio State has lost two players to ejection. Michigan has lost a backup linebacker in Royce Jenkins Stone. So that puts Pat Elfline, number 65, is now in the game, playing offensive guard in place of Marcus Hall. We talked about this offensive line for Ohio State. It's been the backbone of this team. Four seniors, one sophomore, and Taylor Decker. Now they've had to reshuffle for the first time this season. Carlos Hyde will try to calm things a little bit. Falls forward for close to five. And it brings up second down at five. Well, this is where you need Braxton Miller now and Carlos Hyde. Your leaders, your left tackle, Jack Muard, your center, Corey Lindsley, to calm everybody down and get a drive going here with your offense. In the pistol. Straight up the middle is Hyde. And Hyde bounces into the secondary and out to the 38-yard line. 16 more yards by the big fella. It's a little wham play. They watch they bring the tight end across the formation. He kicks out. And again, you can't allow Carlos Hyde to get a full head of steam past your first line of defense. He's too much to handle for defensive backs and even for these inside linebackers of Michigan with a full head of steam. You mentioned they average almost seven yards every time they touch it on the ground. He's averaging 8.4 right now. Miller, play fake, deep middle, wide open on the run is a tight end. And it's Hireman with a big gainer down inside the 35 yard line. Split safety look by Michigan's defense. That tells a quarterback if I've got a, a receiver running down the middle, I can hit him quick. Good read by Braxton Miller getting the ball to his tight end. First down at the 33. Again, off a of play action, deep ball over the head of Devin Smith. Pretty good coverage back there defensively by Thomas Gordon. See, the challenge with, with blitzing, and, and Michigan's not a huge blitz team, the challenge with blitzing Braxton Miller is if you don't get him with that first guy that comes unblocked, then you've got problems, because now you've got guys trying to stay with receivers, and he's extending plays with his legs, plus he becomes a running threat. Miller. Down the middle again and throws a strike to Chris Fields. And that's a first down. 13 yard pickup. Ohio State trying to score here yeah. before halftime to even things up. Well, they're in good shape. They've got a minute 40. They've got two timeouts. They're in field goal range, but uh, a lot of time to work with for Braxton Miller. Five times they've scored in the final minutes of the half. Trying to make it number six. Miller waiting, buys himself some time, and has to throw it away. He gets a moment with his head coach because he was on that side of the field. Michigan fans booing because they thought Chris Wormley, number 43, was held on the play in pursuit of Braxton Miller. Braxton Miller did a smart thing there. Had time, didn't see what he wanted, threw the ball away, and sets up second and ten instead of second and long. Or longer, I should say. They took over at their own nine-yard line with a little over two and a half to play. Seventh play of the drive now here. Miller again in the pocket. Now running out of the pocket. 
directs traffic, and now he'll keep it. And Braxton Miller walks in. Touchdown, Ohio State. 21 yards. Too many guys had their back turned. Nobody turned around to try to tackle it. Well, there were two Michigan defenders in pursuit, and they took themselves out of the play. Watch Braxton Miller cause two Michigan defenders to run into each other. They ended up on the ground. He ended up in the end zone. Watch the end of this play. He's directing traffic. Those two guys took themselves out of the play, and Braxton Miller walked into the end zone. <laughs> wow. Another long scoring drive. We're an extra point away from being tied again. And Basil does the honors. Well, we've had big plays. We've had a dust up, as Todd would call it, a fight that sent three players to the locker room for the rest of the day. And through a half, a little bit of talking going on right now as both teams are heading to the huddle. And they're going to try to separate everybody down there before we have another dust up here at halftime. 21 to 21. Get them in the tunnel. Get them warmed up. We still got two big quarters coming up from the big house in Ann Arbor. Ohio State trying to stay perfect at 12 and 0 before their matchup with Michigan State in the Big Ten title game. 21 21 at halftime. Capital One halftime report is coming up next. And we're just about set for the third quarter. Ohio State 21, Michigan 21. Brad Nessler, Ty Blackledge, Holly Rowe, welcome back to the big house. Well, it's slowed down, partner, in the second quarter. Now we're on pace for 1,200 yards yeah. of offense. We've had 19 plays of 10 yards or more, and it was a dandy first half. Yeah, it really was. Hopefully we'll have the same kind of second half. Both quarterbacks played very well. Braxton Miller doing it more, running the football. Ohio State running with Miller and, and Hyde doing their thing. Devin Gardner played an outstanding yeah, first half. But you know what? He's got to play the same kind of half this half of football because they're right where they want to be, but they can't afford to take a step backwards now. They will get the football first, they being the Wolverines. Trying to ruin Ohio State's season, their perfect season so far, even though the Buckeyes know they've got a date with Michigan State in the Big Ten title game. They still have aspirations even bigger than that should something else go haywire in the BCS standings. So we got two quarters left to figure that out. Drew Basil to kick. And we're underway in quarter number three. And they'll bring it out to the 25 for Michigan. Toussaint in at tailback with Gardner in the shotgun. And he wants to throw on the first play. And he does wide. Oh, Funch just dropped it. Should have had it. Should have had a first down as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, tempers are really running high down here on the field. As you saw in that first half, already a big fight. Three players ejected. But then just before the half, when players were going to the locker room, the coaches had to get in and mix it up again. Urban Meyer was pushing his players, screaming, get off the field. Both coaches warned their teams at the half to knock it off. There were extra security guys, about 20 people in the tunnel to avoid from them mixing coming back out. And unfortunately, there's only one tunnel. <laughs> that can lead to problems. Yeah. I don't know if the, the, the old Gladiator stadiums only have one tunnel. They probably did. On second down to nine, they want to throw a middle screen. Got it to Toussaint. And he got to the 45, pick up a four. See, both teams now, I, I can see the adjustments by both defenses saying, we've got to make these quarterbacks more uncomfortable. Devin Gardner was 11 for 14 in the first half. They're trying to heat it up a little bit. Bosa that time got pressure on Devin Gardner, and I would expect pressure again on this third down play from Luke Fickle's defense. That was Luke on the sideline, the defensive coordinator. And former interim head coach here. Third down and 10. Gardner, quarterback draw. And Gardner's not going to get there, but he got about seven or eight of it back, but he left the ball on the ground. Let's see, was it a fumble? And the ball still popping around out there. It is Ohio State ball. Time is Powell and a fumble recovery. Gardner makes a pretty nice decision to run. It's a quarterback draw all the way. He called run. Was he down before the ball came out? Jay Zier was the guy who was bringing him to the ground. 
think his knee might have been down before the ball came out. And an unfortunate turnover for Michigan. So Ohio State first down at its own 45 yard line. They're going to give it off. Nope, they fake it to Brown and it's Miller going for 15 on his own. So Braxton Miller continues to pile up the rushing yardage. See, that's a, a power run. They fake the sweep, but they pull a guard in front of the play. And so it's a power play for the quarterback. He reads it. If they give him the run, he knows he has a lineman leading up through there and a double team at the point of attack. And he's closing in on a hundred ledge. 98 yards on the ground. Not a big passing day, but he's doing it with his legs. And now he goes back to the power man, Carlos Hyde. Well, he's had some opportunities with play action that he just has missed a couple receivers. The running game sets up that play action. A second down and seven. All three wide receivers to the top of your screen. And it's Hyde. Carlos Hyde, tough to catch, tough to bring down, tripped up inside the five. Well, and that little move and the quickness of his feet is what makes Carlos Hyde special. He's 230 pounds, so he's a powerful back. But watch this little move. Boom, jumps, bounces to the outside, and eludes a cornerback, Raymond Taylor, at 230 pounds. This time he's going to be brought down at the line of scrimmage. So a 33-yard run by Hyde has it down inside the five or it's second down and goal for Ohio State trying to take the lead. Forty five touchdowns in 54 possessions in the red zone for Ohio State. And this guy can really do a lot of different things when you're down at that point. Miller to the end zone touchdown Braxton Miller a three yard scoring run well it's too tough with those two guys with Hyde and Miller in this part of the field in that offensive line it's just too tough to take it all away and Braxton Miller again with a good read getting to the front corner of the end zone and you go back to the turnover by Gardner, but I even go back to the penalty on third and five that made it third and ten yeah. prior to the fumble. Basil's extra point gives Ohio State a touchdown lead. As Todd said, you got to go back to the Michigan possession when they gave it up. On Devin Gardner's fumble right there. And then 56 yards later, most of it by Carlos Hyde. The last three by Braxton Miller. And undefeated Ohio State leads 28-21. Ohio State's got its first lead of the day, 28-21. Braxton Miller on a three-yard touchdown run. Trying to remain perfect at 12-0 with the Big Ten Championship next week against the Spartans of Michigan State, who are leading the Golden Gophers of Minnesota the last time we checked. So now playing with a lead for the first time, and for Michigan, trying to come from behind for the first time. Northfleet on a kick return, and he won't make the 20-yard line. Let's check in with Holly. Well, on that last play where he fumbled the football, quarterback Devin Gardner of Michigan got the lower leg twisted up. He limped off the field, was seen to by the athletic trainer, but he's going to try to return to the game. He's walking very gingerly right now with a noticeable limp. I saw him pull his offensive lineman aside and say, guys, I am not very mobile right now. You've got to help me up front. All right, so we'll keep our eye on number 98. That's why you saw Shane Morris, the backup quarterback, warming up a little bit earlier after Gardner came out following that fumble. Now the Wolverine start at the 17 yard line. Play action quick slant and a nice throw. Jake Butt who's having a big game the backup tight end picks up 11. Well they tried this earlier in the game and it was broken up. That's a big target for Jake Butt. Six foot six 240 pounds. Little quick play fake and they just rise up and throw to the tight end. 
Little pop pass. Nice job catching it with his hands. Jake's got three catches for 75 yards. 11 more on the last one. Play fake. First down throw into traffic. Incomplete intended for Gallon. C.J. Barnett was right there to meet him head on. There's a little bit of that respect you talked yeah. about. Two guys that have been playing a while together against each other I should say and a little smile at the end of the play. Gardner had hit his last five passes before that one went awry. Incomplete on first down you got to try to get at least half the yardage on second down. Now they set up in an eye and punches the tight end goes out as a wide receiver. They'll keep it on the ground. And a good run by Davion Smith. A big run by Davion Smith. All the way down inside the 25 yard line. This looked like a check at the line of scrimmage by Gardner. Like what he saw on the weak side of the formation. Devin Smith did a nice job hanging behind his blockers and then broke one tackle. And that was all he needed. Cameron Williams, number 55, had a clean shot at him. But he wasn't able to get him to the ground. Check in with Holly. Well, guys, middle linebacker Curtis Grant has not been able to play due to injury. So Cameron Williams in there. This is his second game of the year. You see him trotting off to the sideline. They'll replace him. Well, down at the 22, longest run allowed by Ohio State this year. But Avion Smith with a 38-yarder. They'll try him again. So the true freshman out of Warren, Ohio, one of those Ohio kids out there playing strong. For Michigan. Think about this. In the last four games, Michigan coming into today ran the ball 138 times for only 130 yards. That's less than a one yard per carry. Today, a much different story. 112 yards rushing and a good blend of run pass for the Wolverines. Well, here the Wolverines are in the red zone again. Don't want to waste an opportunity to tie this game up. Second down and four. They keep it on the ground. I'm just going to work. Number 32 until they can stop him, and that time C.J. Barnett does. Now remember, as we move forward in the second half of this game, as it was reported earlier, in a close game, Michigan is without their normal place kicker, Brendan Gibbons, who tweaked an injury, so Matt Weil, their punter, and their long field goal attempter is the guy that has to kick field goals. Uh, obviously, they want a touchdown here, but that has to play into the equation for Brady Hoke as well. They're trying to get to the 12-yard line for another first down. Bunches on the move, third down at two. Gardner lobs it out there and tried to get it to him, but he was going to his left, and you could tell lack of mobility there. He couldn't set his feet. Well, what he's mad at is he's mad that Funches didn't look for the ball right away because Funches was wide open. You could tell by formation. Funches, see, he's open right now. Turn your head and look for the ball. Gardner had to get rid of it, and Funches was a little too nonchalant running that route for his quarterback. Well, last year, Brady Hope went for a fourth and two at midfield, winning 21 to 20. It failed. Ohio State took the lead 23 to 21 and never trailed again. And here he is going for it on fourth down and two. So it's in the hands of Devin Gardner. Ohio State a blitz off the corner. Gardner's in trouble. Got rid of it at the last second. Did Billio catch it? No. no. And not only did he not complete the pass, he lost his helmet in the process, and Ohio State takes over. Well, Joshua Perry, number 37, who's been active today, beats the fullback, just drives the fullback right back into the quarterback. And Gardner not able to step into that throw and make an accurate throw for the first down. So whether it be not having faith in his field goal kicker or just wanting to go for it and try to tie the game, that one backfires on Michigan. And Ohio State with a touchdown lead takes over with just under three and a half to go in the third quarter. Carlos Hyde all the way out to the 34 yard line matching his jersey number. When you got the lead and you got this guy you got things going your way. Yeah. Well, Frank Clark just ran himself right past the play left a big opening on the left side for Hyde. And it's Hyde again, and he's got 10 more, and he's got 179 on the day. 
I mean, think about this now. Coming into the game, Ohio State was leading all of college football, averaging 6.9 yards per rush for the season. They were in the 12th game of the year, and they're right about that same number tonight running the football. They're tops in the Big Ten, fifth in the country in rushing yardage a game. And it's a career high for Hyde, and Carlos gets a breather, and Jordan Hall will take his spot. Braxton Miller, quarterback draw. And Braxton Miller into the secondary, got a block inside the 40, and tiptoes out of bounds at the end of another first down run of 17 yards. And we said at the beginning of the game, they're the two best running backs in the Big Ten, Carlos Hyde and Braxton Miller. They're different. Braxton Miller is a make-you-miss guy who's strong enough to break through arm tackles, and Carlos Hyde just runs right through you. Hyde went for 20, then 11, and now Miller for 17 after taking over on downs. And all of a sudden, they're right back in Michigan territory at the 38-yard line. And it's a helpless feeling if you're a defense and cannot slow down a running game. Both guys averaging over eight yards a pop. And Jordan Hall gets in the mix with a four-yard gain there as we're down around two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Carlos Hyde. Senior out of Naples, Florida. And what a season he's had. You know, he played eight games, too. He missed the first three games. He was suspended. And ever since he's come back, he's been a player on a mission. And Urban Meyer just can't say enough good things about Carlos Hyde. This time, a stiff arm got him to the corner. And he takes another would-be Tackler out of bounds. I mentioned Naples, Florida native. Comes from the warmth, playing in the Big Ten in the cold, majoring in African American studies. And the first Ohio State running back with a thousand yards since Beanie Wells. And he just keeps adding to the total today with a career high in the biggest game of the season. And of course, there's another big one to come. And then a bowl game, be it BCS. Rose Bowl, National Championship, all depends on what goes on in the next couple weeks. There's a wide open tight end, Hireman. Touchdown, Ohio State. And you see Braxton Miller thanking Carlos Hyde because that's why this was so wide open. You run Hyde, you run Hyde, an occasional quarterback run, then you go play action, and you have a wide open receiver. Watch Hireman just here, run right down the middle, and watch the linebackers respect the run fake. They come up, they can't get back in time, and it's an easy touchdown for Braxton Miller. And Basil in for the point after. Another long scoring drive. Again, after taking over on downs. And what a difference it can be. That's a 14-point swing, really, when you consider Michigan had a chance to score on the other end. The kick goes right where Norfleet was standing at the goal line. And again, he's not going to make it to the 20 yard line. So Michigan now in a two touchdown hole. Ohio State has scored 21 now, unanswered points. Michigan's got to have an answer here. We only have 16 minutes left to play. Gardner in trouble again. Finally got rid of it at the last moment to Toussaint. And he got eight yards out of it. Take a look at the, the rushing yards by quarter. And Ohio State is uh, they're right on their average yeah, right where they've been <laughs> unbelievable But we've still got a whole quarter to go so they're 3 14 right now looking like they have been all year That's Derek Green brought down by Shazier after a short game the reason I say first down is now the critical down for Michigan is is they're not a good third down team especially when it's seven yards or more needed they they don't have not done a great job protecting their quarterback their quarterbacks a little banged up right now they're two of seven on third down so first down productivity which they had in the first half becomes paramount now in the fourth quarter play fake Gardner loads and fires got his man Gallon on the run and Gallon almost to midfield Another big game for Jeremy Gallon as the third quarter comes to a close. Michigan trying to come from behind in the final quarter at home. 
this presentation of college football presented by K Jewelers will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. And we welcome you back to college football presented by K Jewelers. We start the fourth quarter. Michigan at home trailing by two touchdowns. They run the stretch play to Toussaint. And Toussaint weaving his way through traffic and then knocked out of bounds on the Michigan sideline by C.J. Barnett, but he got 16 yards. Well, they outflanked the Ohio State defense. They had two tight ends over there next to Taylor Luan, the left tackle, and they just kind of secured that edge. They got leverage on the defense with those extra tight ends and a nice run by Toussaint. That was close to being kind of a late hit on the sideline. Green's a tailback in the eye. They're going to stack him up at the line again and drop him for a loss one more time. Nice job by the front wall. Joey Boza led the charge. Joey Boza is a kid who, a true freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Brady Hoke was saying, you know, we recruited him pretty hard as well. And to watch the improvement he's made from the first game of the year to now, been pretty dramatic. Gonna be a great player for Ohio State. Tenth play of the drive for Michigan. Desperately needing a touchdown on this march. Gardner quick play fake throwing again to this time the fullback and that's the second catch of the day for carriage. And again another third down coming up they've got to get to the four yard line for a first down. The red zone offense the last 17 games. Gardner's done most of the scoring on those possessions. But again, he's been hobbled a little bit after that hit he took where he fumbled. Here comes a blitz. Gardner trying to scramble around. Does get away. Throws on the run. And he's got it to Dillio for the touchdown. Gardner to Drew Dillio, 11 yard scoring toss. Excellent job by Gardner eluding the pressure on one bad leg and also knowing that he couldn't cross the line of scrimmage because he was close and found Dillio for the touchdown. While in for the point after. And it's up and good. 11-15 remaining in regulation at the big house. Devin Gardner playing on a bad wheel. Still found a way to get away from the Buckeyes defense and found his man in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Did it and then limped his way to the sideline. 35-28. A drive that they had to have and Devin Gardner was almost perfect in it. On that last play, this is how you have to protect your quarterback. These guys inside have to be solid, and you allow the outside rushers to go around the quarterback. Give your quarterback room to step up so he can keep a play alive. They did that. He gets out of there, and then his eyes are upfield, and he finds Dilio. But if you allow inside pressure to come at your quarterback, he has no chance. Let that rush go around. Let him step up and make a play. And Michigan right back in the football game. They, coaches from Michigan talked about Dilio and the fact that he's healthy. Mr. Dependable is what they called him. And they depended on him to find an open spot in the corner of the end zone to give his quarterback a chance. And it's an 83 yard touchdown drive in 11 plays. Took almost five minutes. And now we just have seven points separating us in the 109th meeting between Ohio State and Michigan. And now they go back to work in the backfield and play action. Braxton Miller will do the honors here and a little stutter step and then walks out of bounds without taking a hit after a pickup of three. Again, I mean, it's kind of choose your poison, you know, when you're defending these guys. But I think Michigan now has to choose and say, we're going to stop Carlos Hyde at all costs and we're going to hope that we can contain Braxton Miller. But, but they can't do, let them both run free. And those numbers you saw on Carlos Hyde a couple of plays ago, an ongoing career high game. Closing in on 200. 
Second and seven. Blitz coming off the corner. And it's Hyde going the other way and still driving. And he's got a first down and the ball's out. Michigan's got it. Hyde trying to get extra yardage at the end of the play. The only question, we haven't seen it. There's the signal there. Wasn't sure if they blew him down or not. We had a play with Gardner earlier in the game like that. You called it, Carlos Hyde fighting for extra yardage, which you love a guy who does this. As he's fighting, they're ripping the ball out. I think it was number 30, Thomas Gordon, who was late to the party that stripped the ball out. And I think Desmond Morgan's the guy that recovered it. What a break for the Wolverines. Number 48's the guy on top of it at the 41-yard line. But the other tight end in motion. Gardner rolls to his right, has to stop on a dime, and now he's going to run. And he's got a first down and a bad ankle. And he's going to get up slowly at the end of that one, too, I think. Well, we are seeing some guts out of Devin Gardner. I mean, he is making plays. We asked Al Borges, what does he have to do today? He's got to make some consecutive completions, and he's got to do some improv plays that make sense. That's an improv play that makes sense. Make the decision to run, fake out Roby, take care of the football, and get a fresh set of downs for your offense. That's some improv to get you invited back on a paying night at a comedy club. First down at the 26. Gardner steps into his throw, and he's got Gallon, but Gallon. Got he's got it. He first lost down. something, but not the football. Not the football. <laughs> we saw that in the Michigan State game. The first pass of the game, he lost his mouthpiece and held on to the football. I don't know if this was a mouthpiece or what it was, but he sure didn't lose the football. And another tough throw on third and long by Gardner. Right on the money. And Gallon, who's made so many big catches all year long, has got another huge one at the 12-yard line. Smith to the nine, where Joey Boza puts the stop on it. Well, we've seen all the backs for Michigan contribute. Smith, Derrick Green, the freshman from Richmond, Virginia, Fitz Toussaint, they've rotated him. And they've all contributed in a positive way to this Michigan offense today. Wolverines can get a first down at the two. Second down and seven. At the nine-yard line of Ohio State trying to tie things up. Eighth play of the Wolverine drive. Gardner throws on the run. Snagged by Gallon. Knocked out of bounds, though. At about the five-yard line. Because the pass was thrown a little bit high and Gallon had to jump for the football, he wasn't able to just catch it and quickly turn up the field for the first down. Watch. He has to go up in the air, and by the time he got back on the ground, the defense had regrouped, and Grant was able to, be, to knock him out of bounds. If he catches that on the ground and can turn up field, maybe he gets the first down. Gardner on this drive on third and nine. He scrambled for 14 on third and 12. He got it to Gallon for 16. They need two more yards here. And as Todd said, they don't need it all in one gulp. Throws to the goal line and uh, incomplete. Incomplete. Dilio's the guy that's saying incomplete because it was almost intercepted by Ohio State. Well, they brought a safety blitz that time. Tyvis Powell came on the blitz. He was unaccounted for, and Devin Gardner had to get rid of the football. There's Powell, number 23, right in the face, and Barnett makes a play on the football, but the blitz. Full Devin Gardner on that play. Fourth down and two with 6.52 remaining. At the four-yard line of the Buckeyes. Gallon in motion. It's Gardner. He's got the first down. Down near the one-yard line. Nice call by Al Borges. They went run all the way. They led with the fullback carriage. Watch carriage lead this. They faked the sweep. It's run all the way for Gardner. Ohio State expecting pass. They were bringing pressure from the outside again, and Carriage with a huge block to get the first down for Gardner. Third time that he's rushed for a first down on third, and that's first and goal at the one. 13th play of the drive. Gardner rolls, wants to throw back to the corner. 
and got it to Buck. Touchdown. A little more magic from Devin Gardner and Jake Butt has had a huge game. The freshman tight end with a touchdown. Matt Weil in for an all important point after. Up and good. What a game. Undefeated Ohio State knew they're going to have their hands full. They had a two touchdown lead. It's evaporated. Michigan ties it up at 35. Devin Gardner leads another touchdown drive for Michigan to tie it. That's his second touchdown grab of the year for the freshman tight end. Career high day. Five catches, 85 yards, and the all important score that's. Deadlock this game again at 35. And now a kick out of bounds. That's something you don't need. Ohio State's got the ball at the 35 yard line. Braxton Miller going the other way. Open field for Miller. Across midfield. Cuts back inside. Braxton Miller, another huge run down to the 32 yard line. You know, the guy who makes a great block here is the center, Corey Lindsley. Watch number 71. He's engaging his man. Now he's going to turn him back the other way and pick off another man in the process. And that enables Braxton Miller to break that thing all the way out the backside for a huge game. A 32-yard pickup down to the 33-yard line. Hyde back in there with Miller now. In the shotgun. And he'll get the call. And I'm sure he'll hold out of the ball this time. About four more yards for Carlos Hyde. Down to 420 remaining. Last 10 years, Ohio State, when leading by 14 or more in the fourth quarter, they had a two touchdown lead earlier. Again, Carlos Hyde's fumble turned into a 41 yard scoring march that took 13 plays to even this game up. Philly Brown joins the backfield. They're going to give him the handle. And Brown inside the 20, and he puts both arms around the football down to the 16-yard line. Yeah, nice little wrinkle by Tom Herman that time. First time we've seen that action. Remember, Dontre Wilson, a big part of their run game, was one of the players ejected. So they put Philly Brown back in the backfield, give it to him with a lead blocker, and he gets a nice conversion for the first down. We promised you over 1,000 yards of offense. <laughs> we've got it. Carlos Hyde inside the 10. And Ohio State continues to get chunk yardage between number 34 and number five. Tell you what, you got to tip your hat also to Pat L. Fain, number 65. He is the backup guard who is in there in place of Marcus Hall, who was ejected after the fight. He has held his own. This offensive line in the running game has not missed a beat with the backup right guard in the ballgame. Again, the pistol set, Braxton Miller with a second down and two. And it's Carlos Hyde. Hyde is close. He's in. No, he's not. At the one. Backpedaled his way in, but he was down before he hit the end zone. Two tight ends in the game. They both do a nice job. Vanette and Hewerman both blocking on the edge. It's a... Uh, Pretty fun thing to watch this Ohio State run game between the tight ends and the offensive line and the running of Hyde and Miller. First and goal. Ohio State trying to regain the lead. And Hyde and Miller run into each other, and then Hyde powers in for the touchdown. The 27th carry for Carlos Hyde in the ball game, and only one time has he been stopped for a loss of yardage or for no gain. And again, he runs into his quarterback and then finds a little daylight and goes right through it. And Elfline is the guy who got the key block. They pulled the guard around. It's a power play and ran right behind number 65 for the touchdown. Basil in for the point after. 
Remember, because of the kick out of bounds, they only had to go 65 yards, but they did it in a hurry. Six plays, 241, and now 220 left for Michigan to do something about it. In the last two Michigan drives, an 11-play drive covered 83 yards, and then after Hyde's fumbled 13 plays, 41 yards, and a touchdown. So they keep playing like they have been in the last couple drives. We're still not going to be done for a while. North Fleet from the four. And they bring him down before he can get to the 15-yard line. Nice job by the Buckeyes special teams. <laughs> yeah, clean old-fashioned hate there. And the game here where we already had a fight in the first half. Gardner rips it. Incomplete bunches the intended receiver. Gardner took a shot yeah. from Joey Boza. Boza was right in his face, wasn't able to step into the throw. Most of Michigan's damage today has been through the air, over 360 yards passing. You can see the pressure inside is tough for quarterback, not able to step up or step into a throw. Gardner on second down and 10. Throws across the middle and punches. He holds on to this one, and it takes three Buckeyes to bring him down. Big catch in traffic by a big target. Funches has had a couple that he mishandled today. Does a great job of catching this one, knowing he was going to get hit right away and protecting the football. First down at the 30. Gardner looked one way, comes back across the middle. Dilio inside the 40. Uh, outside the 40, I should say, to the 42. Minute 50, the clock stops as they reset the change, and you have two timeouts. So you can really work the clock here, and they're out close to midfield. Toussaint flanking Gardner in the backfield. He rolls behind his protection and throws incomplete. And chanted for Chesson that time. So the clock stops with a minute 35 to go. The thing that you've got to really be aware of if you're Michigan here is I don't know that you can overcome a negative play. I don't think you can overcome a sack right here or a real loss of yardage play. You've got to keep ahead of the chains. So on second and 10, you're thinking at least five yards on this play. Gallon, the big play guy, is to the top of your screen. Jake Butt, who's been big today, is lined up in a joint set in the slot on the left on second down and 10. Gardner fires. Got it complete, and it's Dilio again. Boy, he's good. But, you know, he just knows where he's at in the field, in the middle of the field, has excellent hands, and he always comes up with that first down. They missed him in their offense for a few weeks when he was out with the knee injury. The clock starts again now that they've got the change reset. Again, Michigan, two timeouts remaining. They need a touchdown. Final 115. Gardner throws complete again. And this time it's Joe Reynolds, 13-yard pickup. Well, Ohio State is just trying to rush three or four. They're not getting to Gardner. They're trying to play coverage behind it. And Gardner doing a nice job of just being patient and taking what that Ohio State defense will give him right now. Down to a minute. Now the extra rusher comes. Gardner running out of time. Down he goes, and it's Boza. See, that's what I don't know that you can get away with. You got to throw that ball away if you're Devin Gardner. You feel it collapsing. Bring up second and ten with the clock stop. Timeout, Michigan. It's our second timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. Not only do you lose yardage, but you lose a timeout that you have to waste here because you don't throw the ball away. They brought the blitz. Nobody open immediately. That's one you just got to throw away. One timeout remaining for Michigan. Second down and 17. Ohio State thinking about a blitz. They'll back out of it. Four-man rush. Quick throw is complete. And knocked out of bounds at the 32 is Justice Hayes. Pretty good decision that time. Good call by Al Borges. Get some of the yardage back. Bring up third down and eight. You're obviously in two-down territory anyway because you need a touchdown. And that play didn't take very long to, to execute. Only four seconds used off the clock. Interesting to see now if Luke Fickle brings pressure on this third down play. The last time he brought it, they got home. 
for the sack on Devin Gardner. Eight yards to keep the drive alive, 31 yards away from a tie game again. Gardner, a throwback again on a screen to Toussaint. Toussaint inside the 20. Toussaint still going down to the three-yard line. They caught Ohio State in a blitz. They tried to bring pressure. Gardner rolls initially to his right and then throws back. Well executed, well timed, and they caught Ohio State in the right defense for that play. 29 yards down to the two-yard line. And now they spike it to stop the clock with 35 seconds remaining. You can still call running play or an option if you want because you have the one timeout. The spike stopped the clock with 35 seconds. So you have three downs and one timeout. And as they break the huddle, Toussaint stays in there with Gardner. Second down and goal. Blitz coming. Gardner throws. Touchdown, Funches. He might have dropped a couple earlier, but he held on to that one. Brady Hope's going to go for two, I think, to try to win it right here. Yep. Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Almost 114,000 watching with Bated breath. Michigan for two. Now they quiet down for the Wolverines offense. Three yards away from a possible upset. Gardner, right side. It's intercepted. Ohio State intercepts it. Tyvis Powell saves the season. Can you believe it? Those folks can't. Well, Gardner was looking for Dilio, his possession receiver. Ohio State was locked in on number nine. They had him bracketed. And Tyvis Powell came from the inside and made the interception. Gardner had time. He just didn't have an open guy. Braxton Miller with a reaction. Over on the sideline. Ohio State, 32 seconds remaining. They've got the ball back. So now we've got one last chance here, and it's going to be on the right foot of Matt Wild and what his special teams can contribute. First onside kick attempt by Michigan this year. And it goes, I believe, to Roby. It is. And a celebration can almost start now. Watch the coverage on the two-point conversion. There's three receivers. Funches is going to go to this spot. He's going to be covered. Gallon is going to try to get to here. He's covered. And Dilio is the guy they go right to. And they're not, they're not able to get him the football. That close. And now it's only going to take another snap. Braxton Miller takes a knee. Urban Meyer's team goes to 24 straight wins. They had their hands full all day long. And now they're one play away from being 12-0. And they'll meet 11 and 1 Michigan State for the Big Ten Championship game next week. Actually, they don't even have to take another snap, it appears. And Urban Meyer still perfect as Ohio State's coach. 
They don't come much better than that, everybody. Ohio State 42, Michigan 41. We we'll check in with Holly. Okay. Hey, Coach Meyer, it's a tie game. Carlos Hyde has just fumbled. What was the mindset of you and your staff as you took the field to drive yeah, down for that yeah, last he drive? Fumbled, you know, I, I, that's wrong. He shouldn't fumble, but he's straining and he's playing hard. And uh, I felt like our line was going to go win that game for us, our line and backs, because they run, we run the ball really well. What was it like when you're watching Michigan on that two-point conversion? That was, it was well. Yeah, I don't blame their coach. I think that was a great call. I would have probably done the same thing. I mean, end it right there or win the game. And that's a classic uh, game rivalry that uh, both teams played real hard. Carlos Hyde, one of the best days in history as a running back for you. How do you describe his performance? Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's uh, if there's a better back in America, you know, and, and I haven't seen them all, but he's as good as back as I've ever been around. Coach, I know you don't want to talk about this, but there are possible future sanctions for your kids who are ejected today. What concern do you have that the Big Ten may take further action? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to enjoy this win, and I'm disappointed, but I'm going to enjoy this win. All right, thank you. Thanks. Ohio State is 12-0. and 0. Michigan almost spoiled things for them, but they came up a two-point conversion shy. We played this thing 109 times. I've done it several. Never done a better one. 42-41, the final. That's going to wrap it up for Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe. I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from the big house where Ohio State remains perfect with a 42-41 win. Georgia, Georgia Tech and some clean old-fashioned hate is coming up next.